Hello, I'm Harold, and uh, I need to add uh, this disclaimer at the, at the first of this video. I'm not a machinist, and this is not a uh, learning channel. I'm not here to teach anybody uh, how to do anything. I'm just here to share with some people uh, things that I do for the first time. And what I'm doing right now is making my first steam engine. Never made another one before. And most likely I'll never make another one again. It's uh, just, you know, a one time around thing. I used to have that disclaimer on the on the opening to my channel and I got tired of being there. I figured it took a long time. People were tired of, uh, tired of reading it. But uh, I just wanted to make it clear that I'm not representing myself as being a machinist and I'm not representing this as being a teaching channel. If you want to learn anything about uh, machine works, Go see Mr. Pete 222, also known as Tubal Kane, or go look up Tom's Techniques. Both of those guys are professional teachers. They teach machine shop stuff, and you can get three or four minutes worth of education from Mr. Pete as compared to what you could get on any other channel. So, I uh, didn't say that right. You'll get three to four times more uh, education per minute on Mr. Pete's channel. Or Tom's techniques than you're going to get on any of the other machine shop channels and you know if you're looking to learn how to do something you're in the wrong place <laughs> all right well I've, I was <clears throat> reading here uh, magazines and such while I've been in my ceramic library, uh, library and uh, there seems that there's a lot of microbiologists are saying that we've been all together too clean you know that uh, the reason we've got so many allergies and things like that is because kids aren't exposed to enough germs and that made me think about when I was a kid well, I guess you couldn't have got more exposed to germs I mean we lived in a little old free room shotgun house that didn't have indoor plumbing or the only indoor thing it had was uh, electricity and not much of that <clears throat> I don't know I had an old dog I would sleep on top of the dog out in the yard when I wanted to take a nap and I kissed that dog right on the mouth all the time, and I know I'd seen him eat dead stuff and lick up puke and you know, one thing and another, you know. So I'm sure I had plenty of exposure to germs when I was a kid, and I've never particularly been sick, you know. I had a, a couple of little things here and there, but nothing, nothing serious. I'm not allergic to a bunch of stuff, and, you know, I didn't go through a whole pile of childhood diseases or anything. So maybe there's something to it. Maybe maybe people are living too clean, exposing themselves to, <laughs> to their own problems. Uh, apparently, you need a, a good, healthy zoo of uh, bacteria roaming around in your guts, you know, and on your skin and whatever to kind of protect you. Uh, but anyway, enough of the biology. I don't know anything about that either. Um, I just had to deliver a, a dog cage down 45 the other day, and and I noticed that the idiot drivers are still out there. There may even be more than they're used to. <clears throat> Two of the most common idiots are, you know, are the ones that pass you up going fast down the road, or are the ones that are po poking along and you got to pass them up. I mean, those those two idiots are annoying, and uh, there's more of them on the road than there ever was, you know. I see these days people come from the inside lane, cut clean across the front of you to take an exit that they're just about to miss, you know, and uh, that that's not really smart. I remember that uh, we brought up some cats here before, and uh, we had an old cat named Joanne. I don't know how it is that she came to be named Joanne. I, my daughter come up with that. And, we didn't know a Joanne anywhere. And, uh, we didn't know of her knowing any Joanne, but that was, that was a cat's name. And uh, she wasn't fixed when we got her. Not that she was broke, but you know what I mean. And uh, so we were going up to, to Grandma's house, uh, up to the, see the wife's mother. And, and uh, we had the cat with us, and she had a whole litter of kittens in the back floorboard on the way up there. So we managed to keep them all kind of corralled up, you know, during the, the visit and come back home and Joanne wanted to keep the kittens under the, under the couch and the wife wouldn't do that. She'd go and get the cats and put them in the bathroom and 
go in and get the kittens and drag them back under the couch and the wife would go and and drag them back the other direction so uh, anyway anyway the the kittens finally wound up staying in the bathroom uh, it seemed like the wife had stronger willpower than the cat and uh, I was working shift work back then came home one morning off a graveyard shift and every time I'd sit on the throne there well the, the cats would climb up my pants legs and climb up the fuzzy rug that covered the, the tank and cl climb up on my back and I was constantly taking cats and putting them back on the floor and uh, so one morning I came in suffering a little from Montezuma's revenge you know and uh, I thought I was free of cats well, apparently there was one on the back of the toilet tank, and when I stood up, that cat made a jump from my, my back and landed in the commode, and and there it was in this brown river, you know. And I didn't, didn't want to reach my hand in there and pull this kitten out. And uh, I wondered for a minute there, you know, if I flushed it, would the cat go down? But then I figured, no, I just plugged the thing up, drown a cat. So I reach in there and drag the cat out, and I'm trying to wash the cat off in the wash basin, and the mama cat's got a hold of one end of it, pulling on it, and I'm pulling on the other end. It was, it was a heck of a mess before I got that cat clean enough to, I felt like I ought to give the mama cat the job of finishing, you know. It's a heck of a note, so <laughs> that's why well, some of those things can happen in a, in a typical red la redneck's life, you know. Uh, before we get into today's episode of the, the little engine that might run, uh, I was thinking about this little story. Uh, it seems uh, there's a, a local church there, a few minutes before the church services started, the congregation, you know, sitting in their pews and talking, and all of a sudden Satan appeared right there in front of the church, you know, and everybody started screaming and running to the front entrance and trampling on each other and pushing and you know, they're pretty desperate to get away from this guy, you know, this evil incarnate here. And pretty soon everybody was gone except for old Bill. He was sitting over there on his pew. He looked like he was oblivious to the whole fact that God's ultimate enemy, you know, was in, in his presence. So Satan walked up to old Bill and he says, Do uh, you know who I am? Bill replied, Yep, sure do. He says, Satan says, Aren't you afraid of me? Bill says, Nope, sure ain't. He said, he's, you know, calm as he could be. And, and Satan says, don't you realize I can kill you with one word? Don't doubt it for a minute, Snow Bill says. Did you know I can cause you profound, horrifying agony for all eternity, persisted Satan? Yep, Bill replied, calm. And Satan, you're still not afraid? Nope, said Bill. Satan asked, well, then why aren't you afraid of me? Bill says, well, he says, uh, I've been married to your sister for over 30 years. Yeah, okay, let's, uh, let's go on and play with a little engine now. Well, after I climbed up the ladder, I discovered I had little brass spinners all in my fingers. So I climbed down the ladder, sort of tripped over the tripod and knocked the camera in the floor and almost fell over the ladder and I got out of here and actually got the stuff out of my fingers so I got this little guy lined up here I ran the bit down in him and then I loosened the vice jaws and moved things so all the light disappeared on the back there and then clamp it back down and that should make it drill straight through we're going to defeat Mr. Bozo if it's the last thing we do. At least, I think we are. I'm hoping. How's that? I'm hoping. I'm going to vacuum this up right off. I don't need more brass spinners. I 
guess they're good antiseptic clean splinters because I think brass kills germs. I think it's brass or copper. Oh, heck, it might be silver. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's it. Silver. Okay, it's through. Got a little burr on the back. But I'll clean that off. And Mr. Bozo got me here, too. This thing should be a quarter of an inch further down than where I put it. So I'll just have to call it out and I'll have to come back cut that all over again. Isn't that wonderful? But eventually we're going to get there. Okay, so it's been, uh, been a day full of Bozos. Got the bozo on the base plate. I got the bozo that I had on the little uh, eccentric here. And the bozo going out and spraying the bug killer and then having a big rain come and wash it all off. And I think probably that's about all I can take for the day. After all, I'm not Superman. I think I'll go watch YouTube videos or something and, and just be totally worthless the rest of the day. Alright, so maybe today won't be a three bozo day. I still got to put a set screw into this uh, eccentric. Shows here where to drill it. It's a, a nice little small screw and it's a 256 number two screw. So I'll get it set up and uh, drill the hole for it and we'll thread the thing and see if we can do that without breaking anything off or getting out of the line or whatever. I used an edge finder to zoom in on that thing, uh, zero it in, got the uh, X and Y and I think I'm dead center of the, uh, the wide part of the eccentric so now I've got a little center drill there which is what I've got I, I guess I need to get some more spotting drills but <clears throat> I don't have any and I'm gonna make a little start for the for the hole and then I'm gonna take the right drill bit I've got a 0.70 a 0.070 to a 0.073 for 50 to 75 percent thread when I drill this hole and I found a drill bit there that's 0.072 <clears throat> So that won't be as the full number two thread and it won't be the 50% uh, somewhere between 50 and 75% thread. So I think that'll do the job and so I'm going to drill it without the camera because it makes me nervous and I'll be back. Okay that's threaded and there's the little set screw so all I got to do now is just screw the set screw in huh. Sounds simple. Set the camera down. And we'll see if I can screw in something as simple as a little set screw. Back this up wide. I'm not sure I can pick it up now. All right. Screw it with the uh, pointy end down, I suppose. Be better than having the uh, Allen wrench in down, wouldn't it? At least if I ever want to move it again. Look at that. That little booger is screwing in. There he goes. Isn't that great? I don't know if I've actually got an Allen wrench that size, but I'll have to get one before I put it together, obviously. That's that's definitely small. These are the smallest things in the in the whole list of parts though. Alright, so I guess we can say that piece is finished other than maybe I might have to run a reamer through it. We'll find out that later. We'll go on and find what the next part is. Alright, I probably wouldn't pay enough attention. I could have gone ahead and grilled and uh, parted off this, but it needs the eccentric flange. Three quarter inches uh, diameter, 0.1875 thick. So I guess I need a. I think I've still got the brass chucked up over there in the lathe, so I'll just get busy cutting this one out. Okay, so here we are, ready to make the uh, eccentric bushing, shim, whatever they called it. I think it was a bushing. 
we need to sort out the little hole. I may have got carried away there on that hole, I don't know, but I'm sure it'll be all right. Whatever it is, we'll, we'll make it fit. So, now I've got to find the drill bit all over again. All right, <clears throat> I'll if I don't have a, a reamer to fit this, I'll have to get one, because this drill bit's really 0.184 instead of 0 0.187. Felt so like I didn't need all that diameter. And this one's gonna definitely be deep enough. I'm not gonna get caught in the same bozo that I did yesterday. close to an inch deep. We'll find out with the uh, guesstimator here. Why well, is a half an inch deep? Well, half an inch, an inch, what the heck. It's only going to be about, uh, what, three sixteenths thick. So half is plenty deep. Now all I got to do is cut this little booger down to uh, the right size and the camera's going to be in my way sitting there and you've seen a lot of a lot of blade stuff anyway already so I'm just going to do that off camera. All right so we've got these two pieces finished the uh, eccentric and the little bushing for it and they're threaded and, and they're complete. And I guess now I'll move on to the next piece. Okay, so this thing says crank pin brass. I'm gonna thread it with the national course number 540. Huge big thread. Um, it's gonna be three quarters of an inch long and 0.125 in diameter. And so I guess that's the uh, the next project for today. I'll probably do more, depending on what I feel like, I'll try to do this and this and this. And I don't know. I've got the main shaft already made. I guess if I wiped out everything on this page, that's kind of ambitious. We'll see. That's too thin to machine. It springs away from the tool there. And then I wind up undersized here and oversized there. Not quite a lot. I'm gonna just take a little trip tomorrow and find some stuff that's already that size. I'm sure there's some brass rod somewhere that's that size, so obviously this isn't gonna work out. The machine just it's too flexible out here for me to machine it or I'm too heavy handed or something. But I think I'll just try to get the stuff already the right size for that. I'll move down and try to make the quarter inch size. Well I can machine this piece easy enough so we'll get some fast forward. Let's see how close we got. That's pretty close. It's within a half a thousandth for sure. So now all I gotta do is part it off. 
and you've seen lots of parting off so I'll just show you when I finish the part alright time to cut her off almost forgot to lock down the carriage on the end of it. One more part done.